Now, the last thing we're going to talk about today is section 4.8. I'm going to show you how to deal with equations that have fractions in them. Now what I need you to know is that when you have equations, you can do anything you want to them, pretty much, as long as you do it on both sides of those equations. You remember those equations that we had a long time ago? We could add to both sides, subtract both sides, multiply, we could divide, do pretty much anything you want that still works even though you have some fractions. Quick question, how many people like fractions? <laughs> yeah, I don't even really like fractions that much. I know. You know why? It's because they're more difficult to deal with because you have to find a common denominator and things like that, right? And you have to simplify them. And that's not all that great because you don't have to simplify whole numbers. You have to find an LCD for whole numbers. How many people would like to eliminate fractions from here on out? Then pay attention to what I'm about to show you. And listen carefully to what I'm about to say. If you have an equation, yeah. hey, do we have an equation? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What makes you so sure that we have an equation? Equal. 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 If you have an equal sign, if you have an equation, I'm going to show you how to eliminate fractions. If you don't have an equation, you need to focus up here. If you don't have an equation, you can't do this. But if you have an equation, you can get rid of fractions anytime that you want to. Would you like to learn how to do that? Yes. Here's how to do that. The first thing you're going to do you're going to write everything as a fraction. So if it's a fraction, great. If it's not a fraction, write it as a fraction. For instance, 2 thirds is a fraction, 5 over 12 is a fraction. Why is it not a fraction? Make it a fraction. How do you do that? Over Leave yourself some space between these, these values. Hey, uh, by the way, do you remember how to do LCD? Yeah. Your next step is find LCD. <laughs> and the third step, I'll tell you tomorrow. No, I won't, because we don't meet tomorrow. I'll tell you Wednesday. I'll tell you Wednesday. Last two steps, and we'll continue. So if we look at our problem, firstly, can you recognize it is an equation? Yes. What tells you that? Equal sign. Yeah, for sure. Now, I've asked you to write these things as fractions. Basically, what we did last time is said, that's already a fraction. That's already a fraction. But we're going to write this as y over 1 to change the y into a fraction so that we can deal with it a little bit better. Minus 2 thirds equals 5 twelfths. And I'm also going to have you put a little bit of extra space right here. The reason is, you're going to see in a little bit, we're going to use that space to multiply by something to get rid of our fractions altogether. After that, I'm going to have you find the LCD. Have we done that already on this problem? Yeah. <coughs> okay, we can do it pretty quickly if we haven't. We look at all of our fractions. That's not just these two. That's everything. Every one of our fractions. Can you tell me the LCD that I should have? Okay. Now, here's the cool part. This is the part that's going to actually do some work for you. Now, we, we typically don't like fractions, right? Because they're harder to deal with. If you remember this step, this is going to save yourself a lot of time. You're not going to have to deal with fractions at all anymore. You want to learn that, right? How to not have to deal with fractions if you have an equation. If we take the LCD that you just found, and what you're going to do, third step, you're going to multiply that LCD by every term that you have. That means every fraction that you see up there, which is everything, right? Everything's a fraction. We're going to take that and multiply every single term by the LCD. By the LCD. Let's look at what that, that looks like on the board. So if I have y over 1 minus 2 thirds 
and equals 5 twelfths. How many things should I be multiplying by the LCD right now? What do you think? How many are up there? Two. I've got two on this side. I've got one over here. I mean all of them. So how many do I have all together? Three. I want to multiply all three things. <coughs> all three terms. This is a term? Yep. That's a term? Sure. That's a term. Multiply every one of them by the LCD. So what I mean by that is we're going to multiply this one by 12. We're going to multiply this one by 12. And we're going to multiply this one by 12. Every one of them. This is why I had to leave a little space right there so you could write that number. Now, unfortunately, we, we are dealing with some fractions, and we're multiplying by 12. Is there a way that you can change 12 into a fraction so that we can do our work? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, here's the cool part. I'm going to recap this because some, some people get a little confused about what we're doing. Here's the idea. The first thing we're doing is writing everything as a fraction. That's not a big deal because we already have some fractions. We're just going to write our y as a fraction, as y over 1. Then we find our LCD, which you guys should be pros at that by now. We're looking at the denominators, finding out the smallest multiple that has every denominator as a factor. So in, in our case, that's our, our 12. So 12 is our LCD. We take that LCD and you multiply every term by the LCD. Now the reason why this works, I'll show you this one time, I won't have to show it to you again, but do you remember that you can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number and it's still equal? Remember that? You can add to both sides, subtract to both sides, multiply to both sides. That's what we're doing here. In fact, don't write this down, but just watch for a second. What we're actually doing is taking this and that and we're multiplying both sides by 12. This side looks just like that. This side, do you see what would have to happen with that 12? Yeah, you would. Remember distribution? Yeah. This is going to take that 12 times both those terms. That's why I've told you you're going to multiply every term by the LCD. So essentially, we're multiplying both sides by the same number, <laughs> by the LCD. This would give you the 12 times y, this would give you the 12 times the 2 thirds. This would give you the 12 times the 5 twelfths. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Good deal. Okay, so we've done that. We've changed the 12 into a fraction. Now comes the cool part. We're going to try to simplify every one of these fractions. So last step is you're going to simplify. You should have no fractions at this. Let's do this. This is the cool part. Let's look at the right-hand fraction. Can you see anything that's going to simplify between 5 twelfths times 12 over 1? What's going to happen there? Well, no, I don't remember how to multiply fractions. What was that? Sure. Remember that we would do this, right? We'd cross out our 12s. How much are you going to get on the right-hand fraction after we've crossed out those 12s? 5 over 1. Yeah, or? 5. Are you okay getting the 5? Let's do the next one. Let's do this one over here. The, the 12 over 1 times y over 1. Does anything cross out with 12 over 1 times y over 1? No. Okay, so we'd have 12 times y over 1 times 1. How much does this fraction make for you? 12y. Do I need the over 1? No. Okay, let's just do 12y. Minus, okay, the last one, we've got 12 over 1 times 2 over 3. Of course, we'd multiply those things. Cross out what? That's awesome. What goes into both numbers again? Three. So three goes into three One. and into twelve. Four. Sure, four times two Eight. over one times one. Notice how the minus stay to minus. I've got eight. Hey, hey, hey. Would you rather deal with this one or this one? I would definitely rather deal with this one. If you do this one, you have to add two-thirds to both sides, find a common denominator, and put those fractions together, which is possible, but you have to do the whole, whole deal. Here, we use our LCD to eliminate denominators, which is way useful in, in this kind of a simpler example here. But in later examples, this is very, very nice. When you get to Math C, you're going to learn this in conjunction with um, these 
pretty heavy duty expressions that we can get rid of fractions all the time with equations. It's going to save yourself a, a lot of time there. So this is kind of just the beginning for you. But what we do is find the LCD, use that, multiply both sides, or in other words, every term by the LCD, and you should have no more fractions. It's kind of nice. Kind of, kind of nice? Yeah. Do you like that? Can you solve that? Yeah. Let's continue. Now this is much easier to solve because we've already done problems like this. How do you get rid of the, what do you need to get rid of first, 12 over the 8? Eight. Eight. So we're going to add that to both sides. And we're back to stuff that we know how to do already. We get 12y equals 13. We added 8 to both sides. What's our last step? Oh, wait, can I do that? I will. Yeah, I'll get 1 and 1 twelfth, or just leave it 13 twelfths. I don't care if you, if you leave it as 13 twelfths here. Uh, if I haven't given you things in mixed numbers, I'm not going to require you to give me mixed numbers. So here I'll do 13 twelfths. It's not inappropriate to write 1 and 12, 1 twelfth. You can do that as well, but 13 twelfths is fine as well. Would you like to try a couple more examples here? Yes. Okay, I'm going to give you one to do on your own right now, and then we'll cover that in just a little while. So, first, I'd like it's very similar to that one. I'd like you to do the same type of idea. <coughs> Let's do x minus 3 fourths equals 1 20th. x minus 3 fourths equals 1 20th. So the idea is write everything as a fraction first. So put like x over 1. Find your LCD and multiply every single term by the LCD. That's going to get rid of your fractions. Hey, by the way, if you've noticed, this really isn't the same thing as finding a common denominator. We're not doing that process, right? We're trying to eliminate denominators. So look at the board here real quick. I know it might seem a little weird to you. You're like, well, wait a second. Why am I not doing 20 over, tw uh, sorry, in this case, 12 over 12? Why am I not doing 20 over 20? Why, why, do, why can I get away from that? Isn't that changing the value of the fraction? And the answer is, in short, yeah, it is changing the value of the fraction. However, there's something special that happens when you have an equation. When you have an equation, as long as you multiply both sides of it, you can multiply by whatever you want. Are you with me? Whatever you want, doesn't really matter. So it's not that you have to multiply by 20 over 20, you're not actually multiplying by one. What you're doing instead is multiplying every term by the same number, that's keeping your equation equal. That's the idea. So we're not finding a common denominator here, we're using the LCD to eliminate denominators altogether. That's the plan. So let's go ahead and do that here. The first step that you should have done is, of course, make everything into a fraction. So we need to see x over 1 minus 3 fourths equals 1 20th. Did you all do the first step? Yeah. Okay. The next step is to find the LCD. The LCD must contain all three of your denominators. So this one, this one, and that one. What is your LCD here? Good. LCD is 20. Now here's what I'm talking about. The next step is crucial. All right, the LCD, everyone's going to be able to get the LCD. You guys are really good at that. The next step is you've got you to nail this. What we're doing, instead of doing something like finding 20 over 20, 
We're, we're not multiplying by one anymore. What we're doing is we're multiplying both sides by the same number. If you multiply both sides, what that comes down to is you're multiplying this fraction and this fraction and this fraction all by 20. That's what you're really doing, multiplying every single term by that number. If you have questions now, now's the time. Yeah. Yes. I am going to. Yeah. Now I just want to be clear that what we're doing right now is we're actually multiplying by the number 20. Not 20 over 20. 20. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. The reason why we can do that is because this thing is, it is an equation. And some of you might be wondering why haven't we done this the whole time with fractions? Well, it's a special case. We have equations now. Equations let us multiply both sides by the same number. That means multiply this side by 20 here, multiply that side by 20, and it's still an equal equation. If we didn't have an equation, could we do this? If we did not have an equation, could we do this? No. no. The only thing you could do in that case is find a common denominator. I don't want to do that. I want to get rid of denominators. Now, the next thing we're doing, of course, well, we get 20 times a fraction, and 20 times a fraction, and 20 times a fraction. What we do is we change those 20s into fractions themselves. That way we can multiply fractions together. So the only extra step here that we've got is just put that over 1. 20 is the same thing as 20 over 1. And here, and here. Are you okay with that so far? Yeah. Next thing you get to do, this is the best part, okay? The best part is you get to cross stuff out. You get to use that, ignore all this. You get to use the multiplication of fractions that we learned. You get to use the multiplication of fractions that we learned, and here as well, if you can, to cross out those numbers that you don't need, to cross out and simplify those fractions. Now, the, here's the whole cool thing about this, is that once you've done this step, you should have no more fractions. It has to work that way. You see, when you find an LCD, what you're doing is you're finding a number that has every denominator as a factor. What that means is every denominator must go into that number. What that means is that if I multiply it, it will for sure cross out every single time. And that's kind of nice because that eliminates your fractions every time. In short words, if you do this and you still have a fraction, you've made a mistake. That's, that's the idea. If you do this and you have a fraction still, you've made a mistake. Okay, so tell me, what am I going to get on this side of my equation? Yeah, not zero, right? Everything crosses out, but I have ones, so I get the number one. How about this? Does anything cross out over here? No. So tell me what I get. Oh, yes. yes. Beautiful. Love it. Then I have a minus sign, and does anything cross out here? 24. It has to, yeah, because 4 is a factor of 20 by necessity. That's what the LCD means. 4 goes into 4 once and into 25 times, so we're going to get minus how much? 15. 15. Perfect. Raise your hand if you made it that far. Good deal. Now we get to solve it. It's a lot easier to solve. We're not having to find any common denominators or do any work with fractions. We're going to, what now? Perfect. We get 20x equals 16 divided by 20. What do you think? Yeah, you got to reduce it. What goes into both numbers? That's your answer. Do you like the not having to deal with fractions here? Reduce. So if if we do this, can't does this again? Does this work if you don't have an equation? No. So if you don't see that equal sign, can you do this? No. But as soon as you see the equal sign, go game on, go for it. y equals 2, I need you to know something about fractions with variables. Any time that you see a fraction next to a variable like this, where it means 1 fifth times y, where you have that, it's okay to do one little step that will help you out every time. 
If you ever have like a one-fifth y, what you can do is you can always take that variable and put it on the top of your fraction. So for instance, one-fifth y is the same thing as y over 5. One y over 5. That's appropriate. If you had 3 sevenths x, how else could you write that? 3x over 7 would be great. Yes. The reason why this works, if you, want to, if you want to know the reason why, you agree that this means 3 sevenths times x, right? Yes. Well, if it means 3 sevenths times x, it means 3 sevenths times x over 1. If you multiply those fractions straight across, you get 3x over 7. That's why we can do this every time. Are you clear on that? Yes. Okay, good. So in our example, instead of dealing with y, oh sorry, one-fifth y, let's talk about y over 5 equals 2. Actually, you've, you've already dealt with that problem before. How do you get rid of something divided by 5? Multiply it. You could. Well, you multiply both sides by 5. Now, will this process still work? Sure, sure. If you want to check this out, I could write 2 as 2 over 1. Agreed? Mm -hmm. I could find my LCD, and here's, here's where you're going to see that this is going to actually work. What's your LCD? Five. Five. You'd multiply both sides by 5, right? Yeah. yeah. So this would be times 5, times 5. Of course, we mean 5 over 1. But what's going to happen? Look, is it, isn't this exactly what we did before? Multiply both sides by 5. It just happens to be the LCD in this case. 5s are gone. How much do you get? One. Equals five equals ten. That's something we can also do. We'll do a couple more together. I'll give you three to do on your own, and we'll start moving on. Okay, 5 sevenths m equals 25. Can you tell me the first thing you might want to do with this problem? Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's make this into one fraction. You see right now the 5 sevenths m could be a little difficult to deal with. So I'm going to translate that to 5m over 7. You can take the variable, put it on the top of your fraction, and that's appropriate. Equals 25. Now, I do got to tell you, there are other ways that you can do these problems. I'm just giving you one way. Uh, some people like to multiply by the reciprocal here, and that works as well. Uh, this way I'm giving you is universal, though. It's going to especially be useful in the latter type of problems I'm going to give you today. So using our method, we'd, of course, change that into 25 over 1. Can you tell me what is your LCD when you're looking at these two fractions? Seven. Seven. So LCD is 7. Okay. And what this says to do is you're going to take that 7, you're going to multiply both sides by 7. What we do when we multiply both sides by 7 is we find a number that's going to eliminate our fractions for us. So on the left-hand side, notice, do the 7's cross out? Yes. Yeah, they have to. And we get 5m. On the right hand side, how much are we going to get with 25 over 1 times 7 over 1? What's that going to be? So if it's 175 over 1, I'm just going to leave it 175. Hey, can you do that problem? Sure, sure. What do you have to do to solve that problem? 5 by 5. If you divide 175 by 5, you are going to get 35. Thanks. Bless you. Welcome. Yep, 35. We'll do one more together, and I'll give you a few to do on your own. Let's try negative 7 tenths x equals 2 fifths.
Yeah, this one. But I'd like your help on the steps. I want you guys to kind of verbalize what we're supposed to do in this case. What's the first thing that we're supposed to do in this case? Put the negative and variable on the top. Very good. So instead of having negative 7 tenths x, I'm going to have, can you read it to me? What am I going to have? Perfect. We automatically have two fractions. What's the next thing you might want to do here? LCD. Great. Let's find the LCD. How much is the LCD? 10. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Okay, what do you do with the LCD? So that's here and here. Are we doing 10 over 1 or 10 over 10? Which one? 10 over 1. Good. We're actually multiplying by 10. It just happens that we're doing it on both sides, keeping that equation equal. Can you tell me what's going to happen on the left-hand fraction? What do we cross out? Ten. Ten. What are we left with? Ten. Don't lose your negative. On the right-hand side, do we cross anything out? Yeah. Yes. Five, and ten. five goes into five once, into ten twice. How much are we going to get over there? Four. 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 Are we done? No. All over close. Negative seven? Yes. Negative seven. Why not? Oh, we got the same thing. Yeah. You've got to have exactly the same thing, including that sign. So if we if we divide by seven, I want you to notice something. If we divide by seven, you're going to get negative x. I don't want negative x. I want x. So to get rid of both the seven and the negative, you divide by exactly what is there. This is going to give you x. This is going to give you negative 4 sevenths. Remember, it does not matter where that negative goes. Bottom, out front, on the top, doesn't matter. You have negative 4 sevenths on that exam. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Good deal. Why don't you try three of these on your own? Work through them. Very similar to these examples. We'll start building up on this stuff in a little bit.
All right, guys, we're about to get going on these ones, at least on the first one here. So in every case, what we're trying to do is first write this thing as some fractions. So making sure instead of 1 3rd x, we got x over 3. Instead of just 7, we have 7 over 1. That allows us to find an LCD pretty easily. We take the LCD, we multiply both sides, or in other words, every term, every fraction, by the LCD, and every fraction should be gone. Let me make this clear. If you do this process, which you should be doing, and you still have a fraction, you've done something wrong. Okay, this should get rid of every fraction that you have. That's the idea. If you don't, then it's kind of a waste of time, right? I mean, we, we want to make sure our fractions are gone. So over here, we're going to have the x, 1x over 3, or x over 3 equals 7 over 1. LCD, of course, is 3. We'll take and multiply both sides by 3. Remember, we're not actually finding a common denominator. We're manipulating this problem with the LCD to get rid of denominators. So it's not like 3 over 3, it's just 3 over 1. Over here, nothing really simplifies. We get 21. Over here, though, the 3s, they simplify out. We, we get rid of those. We just get an x, and that actually is your answer. You get x equals 21. How many have got x equals 21? Good, very good. Okay, next up, same basic idea. Only this time we don't have 1 fifth, we have 3 fifths, so we're going to have 3 over 5. Perfect, and we're going to make that equal to 2 over 1. LCD is 5. We're going to use that 5 to multiply both sides. Five over one, five over one. Again, and nothing simplifies here. We just get ten. Ten over one. Here, though, the fives are gone. That's great. That needs to happen, right? What we don't want to do, we don't want to get something like fifteen over five. Don't waste your time with that. If you get fifteen and over five, you're going to have to reduce that fraction anyway, and you're going to end up simplifying that just like you would normally. You with me? So the whole idea isn't to make it worse. It's to make it better to get rid of your denominators. If you're not getting rid of denominators, go back and fix the problem. You shouldn't have any fractions after this. So 3n equals 10. Last step is to get rid of that 3. We know we can do this. We'll just divide by 3. We'll get n equals 10 thirds. You can leave it as 10 thirds. That's fine. You don't have to make it a mixed number. This is simplified. It's just not a mixed number. If you want to give me 3 and 1 third, it's not a problem. You just don't have to do it. <laughs> At this point, I, I, I'm really not concerned too much about that. I just do it so you can see what's going on. Okay, last one. We're going to change this into a fraction and get 3x over 4. We'll also move that negative to the numerator to get negative 1 over 16. Hey, by the way, what is, what is your LCD for that number? 16. So we're not going to multiply before, but 16. So 16, 16, so 16 over 1, we're going to cross out everything that we can. On the right hand side, what crosses out over there? 16. What am I going to be left with? Negative 1. Oh good, I'm glad you didn't forget the negative. So we still have negative 1, that's going to affect our answer, right? On the left hand side, should I multiply 16 times 3 or cross out the 16 cross with the 4? Out. Cross out. Yeah, that's the whole plan here. Get rid of the 4, make a 1. Get rid of the 16, make a 4. And then multiply. How much do you get? Cool. 
Now it's a basic equation. We've dealt with all these equations before. It's kind of nice. What's our last step? If we do, we're going to get x, and we're going to get awesome job. How many people were three for three just out of curiosity? Good for you. That's, that's really good. It's fantastic. Can you do it if you just have like a 5x equals a fraction? Like negative 3 over 4? Yeah. Well, it might be the first thing you'd want to do here. Okay, that's the whole idea, sure. So make this 5x over 1. Yeah, very good. Because if I have that 4 on the right hand side, that still counts as a denominator. Here, my denominator is 1, so LCD, yeah, absolutely is 4. And we're going to go through the same process. We take that LCD, we multiply both sides, or in other words, every fraction by 4. And what we really mean, instead of just by 4, we mean 4 over 1. Because we want to make sure we're multiplying fractions and times fractions. Hey, folks, on the left, can you tell me what I'm going to get? Sure. On the right, what is going to happen? Very good. What am I left with? Negative three. Give a little head nod if you're still with me on this. Okay. And lastly? Divide. If we divide by 20, which is what we need to do, we get x equals negative 3 over 20, and we're done. Method works because you get rid of fractions. Then we have problems we've been dealing with this whole semester, basically. Okay, try one more as I write some problems up on the left-hand side of the board here. Let's make sure we get this one right. Let's do 4y equals negative 5 over 11. Okay, so certainly we're going to make that 4 over 1. And of course, we're going to find our LCD. What was your LCD for that problem? 11. So we're going to write LCD 11, multiply it here, multiply it here. We're going to get 44y equals perfect, negative 5. The only other step we've got to do, divide both sides by 44. We'll get y equals negative 5 over 44. That's a funky fraction, but that's all right. Not a big deal. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with what we just talked about so far? Good, okay. Now, this is all great. There are ways that you can do these problems without doing the stuff that I've just taught you. There are methods for doing that. And there's even methods for doing this without what I've taught you. However, it's going to make it so much easier. Where it really, really shines is doing problems like these two, which we're going to look at right now. So when I have more than just one fraction equals one fraction, when I have like something with an x in a fraction, and then another fraction equals a fraction over here, man, this stuff is nice. Because we can, just like we did over here, get rid of all those fractions all at once. Are you ready for it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing, what's the first thing? Make it a fraction. Okay. Two a fraction. Good, yeah. So fractions first, x over 8 plus three-fourths. Leave yourself some space there. Equals two over one. Make everything into a fraction. That was always our first step. LCD is what now? Very good. Yeah, we have to consider every denominator. So if we consider all those denominators, LCD is certainly a...
Now, what do we do with that LCD? Times okay. Times Okay. Hey, is this good enough? No. No. Why not? Okay, is this good enough? Oh, I see. So when I say both sides, what I don't mean is just this outside one and this one over here. What I mean is both sides, like everything, every term you have. So it's not just these two, it's also that one right there. You've got to multiply that by 8. Otherwise, you technically have not multiplied both sides of your equation. You multiplied two out of three terms. We have three fractions, three terms, got to multiply three things by 8. So that's also that one. One, two, three, three eighths. Multiply each one of them by eight. <clears throat> now we get to cross stuff out. This is the best part, my favorite part. What crosses out here and what are we left with? X. Okay, what crosses out here? One and two. So plus equals 16. Beautiful. I'll tell you what. It's so much better to deal with than that one. On that problem, if you didn't do this, you'd be subtracting three-fourths right now. Then you'd find an LCD. Then you'd be multiplying by the reciprocal of one-eighth, and you'd have the same exact answer we're about to get, but it's going to take a lot more fraction work. This one, one fell swoop, get rid of fractions. Subtract six, you get x equals ten. Not a problem. Not a problem. That one, that first step getting rid of fractions is pretty crucial for us. Don't you love it? This is the first time you can probably say, I love these fractions, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, let's see. We're going to do uh, two more together. I'll give you two on your own, and we'll call it a day. <laughs> you know, I'm going to leave that one for you. We're going to, you're going to come back and do this one on your own. I'm going to do one more. One or two more with you over here. We'll come back to that. Well, we're going to kind of pick up the pace here and start doing these a little more rapidly, and I want your participation. So, you tell me the first thing you're going to do on the problem. Make it into a function. Good, so six over one. Then you're going to do what for me? LCD. Good, LCD, okay. Hey, in this case, your LCD is, in every other case, in every other case you've had so far, your LCD was one of the fractions. In this case, it's not. So you've got to be kind of careful. Don't just pick the biggest denominator. You've got to actually pick your LCD. And it's got to include all three of these denominators. It's 15 in that case. Are you with me so far as that that's 15? What are we going to do with the 15? How many fractions do we have here? Three. Okay. 15. 15. 15. Multiply every single one of those by 15. Now we get to try to simplify these fractions before we, we multiply. On the right hand side, there's nothing to simplify. We're going to do 6 times 15, and you're going to get. Hey, can you simplify this fraction? Yeah. Yeah, sure, you have to. Yeah, you have to be able to because that's how the LCD works. One and three. So I get three X. How about this one? One and five. Would you raise your hand feel comfortable getting down to three X minus five X equals ninety? Cool. Are we done? No. Close though. Pretty close. What's the next step? Uh, get rid of the smaller. That would be if they were on different sides, we'd be doing that. But first thing is to, combine to simplify, and we're going to combine them. So you if you can, what was it? You get negative 2x. You have a 3x and a minus 5x. That gives you negative 2x equals 90. And our very last step, if we have negative 2x equals 90, is divide by what? X equals positive or negative? Negative 45. That's it. You guys are really getting the hang of this, huh? 
It's really good. I like it. Okay, one more together, two on your own. We're done. That's a plus. All right, guys. You help me out now. What's your first step? Good. They're already fractions. That's not. Ten. Yeah. Ten. Wait, explain. Why, why ten? OK. So we're looking at all three of these things, finding out the LCD. And we're going to take the LCD and multiply it how many places? Three. three. So that's here and here. And here, and of course, we're not just multiplying 10. It's like 10 over 1. It is still 10, but it's 10 over 1. And we're going to simplify everywhere we can. Now, in every case, we're going to be able to simplify this fraction to get rid of our denominators. What are you going to be able to simplify to here? 10. 10. 10. 10. 10. So you're going to get? 1, 5. 5, what? Perfect. We still have an equal sign. On the right hand side, we've got 5 and 10. That gives you 2y. Then, yeah, of course we have a plus sign. And then lastly, 15. Sure, 15 because we have 1, 5. 5 times 3 is 15. We get 5y equals 2y plus 15. Not sure if you have to show with me. What now? Good, yeah, smaller variable. Now, this is different than this problem. Here we have them on the same side, we combine. Here we have no like terms to combine. We have them on different sides. You get rid of your smaller variable. 3y equals 15. Of course, we can divide that. If they're not on the same side, you have to get rid of the smaller one. Y equals 5. Okay, I'd like you to work on this one if you can make it that far, but I want you to definitely do this next one I'm going to give you. Do x over 2 equals x over 3 plus 1 half. If you finish that quickly, do the next one, but I'm only going to give you about a minute to do that because I want to go over it in class, and we're almost out of time. If you want to check this one at home, if you got a 2, you got that one right. Maybe try that one at home, see if you got that. On the left-hand side, of course, we already have fractions. Our LCD is 6, 6 over 1, 6 over 1, 6 over 1. Did you get the LCD of 6, by the way? Yeah. Good. Okay. Here we get 3x. Here we get 2x. 3 plus 3. Plus 3. Excuse me. We'll subtract our 2x. We'll get x equals 3, and we're done. So that's as far as we can go. We got that. How many people feel pretty good about what we talked about? Good deal.